total gas exchange. And the latest rendition of that effort was back in there about 10 years ago, where you would put a catheter in the superior vena cava, a catheter in the left groin, a catheter in the right groin, and do triple venous cannulation to achieve blood pool separation. Well, we got to thinking, gosh, you know, during heart surgery, we do back cable cannulation. We should be able to do this with a catheter. And we designed what we affectionately called the Wang Swish double lumen catheter. And we're able to get a company to actually develop this. Uh, we could talk about that at length, but it was a huge effort to get a company to invest in that kind of R&D effort. Uh, but our prototype allowed us to have a very thin-walled stainless steel reinforced tube with uh, the key, really, the breakthrough technology, if you will, this shouldn't look that foreign to any of you. In fact, when everybody says, oh, you invented this thing, I have to sheepishly say I didn't invent anything. All I did was take existing technology and made it up. And you'll, you'll recognize that the infusion cannula is actually Grinzig balloon non-distensible technology, where when you flow liquid through a non-distensible balloon, you've now created a cannula. That was the thought, and that's what actually made the difference. So we came up with prototypes of this, sold it to the company, and uh, what they came up with, what the Avalon company, it took them five engineers, uh, three years and about $10 million to actually make this thing happen, and that is to have a collapsible balloon to where when you insert the cannula, it inserts as a single cannula, we're using Seltinger technique, just like everybody in the room's familiar with. And then when you start to reinfuse blood through the non-distensible balloon, it becomes an effect uh, reinfusion cannula. So this is the way it appears conceptually. You have bicable cannulation from the SVC and the IVC, and you reinfuse blood right at the tricuspid valve. A number of little refinements, ultra sharp taper, so that when you pass it through the skin into the vessel, there's not that usual hang up that you always feel when you hit the fascia. And so we, we put a real long taper. Since there were thoracic surgeons designing this catheter, we knew we were gonna be putting the thing in, so we wanna make it better. Um, we got it to where we could put it in in about 30 seconds, get about two and a half, two and a quarter to two and a half liters of flow. And we were able to achieve a recirculation of only 2%. And this allowed a complete separation of the venous and the reinfusion pools. We then had our first prototype, which was a 26 French double lumen catheter, which we put in a sheep. Uh, we uh, put this animal, let it stand up. And this is my absolute favorite slide of all time, because with a single catheter in the superior vena cava, we're able to achieve dark blood or desaturated blood drainage and arterialized or oxygenated blood reinfusion. As my lab assistant says, black blood out, lead blood in. And that seems to really make the huge difference. Uh, what we're able to do is maintain the two liters of flow, and uh, here we're showing that over 28 days, we're able to accomplish total gas exchange in a standing active sheep. And uh, therefore, we've now been able to develop this uh, bicable double lumen catheter that can accomplish two liters of blood flow, accomplish total CO2 removal, and accomplish uh, total uh, oxygen gas exchange. Let's see if this will work. No, that didn't work. Frank, you wanna? This is obviously a company developed video, which I shamelessly show you because I'm not clear, I can't make a video like this, but it does show the fact that the catheter has been developed and it has the very thin tapered uh, lead in for being able to insert the catheter as a single catheter uh, with Seltinger technique. It's very flexible. It doesn't kink, doesn't, so far in uh, one month studies, it doesn't break. As you can see, when you take the introducer out, that collapsible, non-distensible balloon, which serves as the inner cannula, will collapse. So you stick this in uh, through the jugular vein, advance it. By the way, I don't make any money or work for this company. I just like, I just wanted to see this catheter see the light of day. Um, we get drainage from the IVC and the SVC, and it reinfuses right into the tricuspid valve. You can move on. The rest of it's propaganda. But the concept is real, and uh, we're happy to say that the catheter was released uh, January 15th uh, with FDA approval. Uh, we were able to apply this catheter last a uh, few weeks ago to a newborn with meconium aspiration. And again, I'm, pl I'm pleased to show you that 
uh, when you put this catheter in, you get desaturated venous blood out, arterialized or oxygenated blood in, and you don't get the mixing that we used to be plagued by in the past. Conceptually, this could be uh, utilized as a pericorporeal artificial lung because if you can mate this catheter up with a portable unit such as an axial flow pump and a gas exchange device, uh, this conceptual drawing, I've had this around now for about four or five years, but this was the, the goal of this whole effort. Well, in fact, that goal was achieved uh, last week. Chuck Hoops at UCSF did the first uh, artificial lung bridge to transplant patient using an Avalon catheter, an off-the-shelf Quadrox gas exchanger, and an off-the-shelf Centromag pump. And here's a gentleman who's awaiting his lung transplant. This echo shows that there's blue blood on this side and red blood on this side, and there's virtually no mixing to where the catheter is accomplishing the goal of venous and reinfusion admix, uh, avoiding any remixing or uh, desaturation of their drainage blood. So we are accomplishing total gas exchange and I can share this slide, which is kind of busy, but Chuck sent it to me last night. And it just shows that he's now able to walk around, he's able to exercise, he's able to uh, go to, get on a treadmill and maintain his uh, muscle tone, and he's actively awaiting transplant. So if anybody in the room has a donor lung for this gentleman, this is a little bit of a solicitation because he's on this device, first one in the world, so we're kind of nervous, and we'd like to get a lung for him as soon as possible. So at any rate, that's a story of 25 years worth of work. Obviously, we've not developed the artificial lung. There's no cute little thing you can sew in the chest and have somebody bounce around and, and go out and play golf. But it's certainly, we do have a functional unit that would allow a patient to be ambulatory and still exercising on a treadmill in order to make them a viable uh, lung transplant candidate. Thank you.